Turn it over to you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, great. Thanks. All right. We've got the meeting called to order. Um, we got our agenda, uh, review survey responses, discuss some action items based off of our meeting last week, um, discuss maybe some resources we might want to support with the website with Bob here. And then we had a proposal submitted to us that um, Bob shared in the agenda that um, um, a community member who reached out to us, um, to Bob and then to me through the um, through the task force website that I said we would talk about as well. So I guess we would just get started with, we got to talk with our friends at the nonprofit group, but what were we noticing in the survey that we need to focus our energy on, um, specifically what any residents or citizens perspective from that disaggregated data? I agree. I was um, I was struck by the division in the community, uh, and I've been racking my brain. I just don't know how to address that. Oh, there's Sue. Here you go, Sue. I'm sorry. Sue, Sue should Hi, be guys. unmuted now. Okay, thanks. So, oh, there she is. Talking through the survey results and maybe some themes and things we noticed that were specific to our task force that were um, now that we're without the nonprofit group that we can maybe focus. On. Well, my concern was, um, I and mean, we talked about communication, and of course, I'm always looking out for um, elderly and seniors at home and people who aren't don't have access to computers and. Um, Gina, you talked about posting some stuff on a board uptown, but right now a lot of those people are sheltered. Um, so, you know, my concern about communication would be how are we reaching people who are sheltered at home who maybe don't have computer access? And are there even uh, a lot of those people? I don't know. Um, I just n know in my experience that was the clientele that I mostly dealt with. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it was a real issue not to have computer hookups. So we had to do a, we had to modify a lot of things to make sure they were included. I'm just wondering in this communication, I was just, try, I'm not seeing that piece. I just, not that we have to fix it right now, but I'm just, that was something that I, it, that is a red flag for me. Yeah, and um, I, I can, um... And the not having a computer is really a, a huge stumbling block. That's a huge barrier. Um, I drive meals on wheels. And so I do get to interact with a very limited number, but um, a lot of the people that I get to see once a week now are their families are stepping up and they're making new relationship with neighbors, which is wonderful. Um, there was, again, you had to be online, but there was an adopt a senior. Mm -hmm. Uh, Facebook page, uh, and they uh, got everyone adopted so quickly that they shut the page down. So I thought that was really good. Uh, one resource we do have is Ginny Hicks is the president of the Oconomowoc Senior uh, um, Senior Center, and she is very computer savvy. And it seems like there's six to nine hundred members are as well. And I know she posted the survey, so I think a lot of the a lot of the respondents may have been through through her. Um, and, but again, those are people who are likely either you know. It, and I, I also, some of the neighborhoods I go into, or like the um, the apartment buildings for the seniors, they have their managers who are communicating with them. Um, so I agree with you, but I think it's a huge problem, and I don't. I was happy to see those few little things that I have seen working, but I don't have an answer for the rest of it. Those that well, I, your, your meals on wheels may be um, a way that, you know, we may have some county access of a way we can um, see if there's a need. Um, if you've got, you know, when, when you've got meals on wheels, people going in, maybe we can communicate with those drivers and deliverers to let, to let us know. Um, I, even the county may even be willing to let us know if they have somebody falling through the cracks. I, I'm not sure, um, 
that may be a breach of confidentiality, but they may look at they may look at us as a resource. You know what I mean? So they they may get the person's permission to contact us. Um, sometimes when they're doing home visits, they they're looking for all kinds of resources to to connect the person up to, and so maybe um, you know maybe their awareness, maybe the county. Um, Aging and Disability Resource Center, maybe they should be aware that we exist and um, would be open to um, meeting some needs if we can. Once we set, once we decide what needs we can meet, um, maybe that would be a good place to communicate. Well, and you just reminded me, uh, the a I do drive for the ADRC through the county, and they did call all of their um, recipients at the beginning and the plan was I believe that if the person wanted a call back that they would get a call back as often as once a week because for some of our recipients we're the only person they see and we were seeing them once a day for five days a week and now we're delivering once we deliver five meals once a week rather than one meal once a day five days a week so they're still getting the right amount of food but not the visits I, I am seeing them being social though, which makes me happy. But, and again, the ADRC was sensitive to that, did start with calls. I can follow up with Christine at the county and see, make sure she knows about us. And if someone's willing to give their information and some specific needs, she could direct them to us. That's a great idea. So like does, the, does, does the ADRC deal with that too? <laughs> So, Gina, the information you forwarded to me the other day, um, what I did is I shared with our utility, because when we have people who get utility assistance, these are all usually the same chain of people. And what we were shared with through the county was they can't share direct information. However, however we can get access to being aware through 211 mm -hmm. is a good channel, because that's where people are going to be reaching out for those types of services so yeah, and and uh, the adrc and 211 as i understand are in the same building and they communicate well so if you have a contact there that might be a good yeah way. so if they don't know about us though so I, yeah. I will make sure that they do yeah. well we would have to define what what resources we're offering i mean because you have to be careful because they can they can dump a lot of things on you, you know, because they have a lot of needs. So, and their their budgets are limited. So we would have to be very clear about defining what we're offering. I think before you go and make that contact. Um, I wonder. I wonder if it's worth. Sue, you just kind of said it. Once we know what we're communicating, and once what's out there and available, if we have some sort, I don't know what it is, and and Bob, I'm certainly not volunteering more work on your end, but I don't know if there's like a, a hotline that has a summary of resources and information available and how to get it. And we just kind of have a simple card that we're able to use with Silver Streak, with Meals on Wheels, and all these people that are actively mobilizing around the elderly community to say, hey, if you're looking for information on social and safe socialization, you know, and you don't know how to get the internet, this is a number you can call and hear about it. And what it is, like, we have a line here at the high school where you can just call and say, what's going on? Yeah, and most of those resources are going to be handled through the county. Right. Right. That's statutorily how it works. Okay. So. They have a resource book, I believe, and they have the two one one. So I mean, they they have those things they hand out. Um, I'm just wondering if we if we want to, you know, tap into stuff that's already there versus right. re recreating new stuff. Right. Well, I'm happy to not make any promises, but since we don't really know what people need to just make the connection to say, hey, if you have somebody in uh, in the city who needs help, you know, we're not making any guarantees and I don't, I'm going to say, I'm not even sure what we're offering, but just to know that there, we, we're looking out for everybody and we don't want people to fall through the cracks. And even if we contacted the adopt a senior uh site again to to see if they'll you know i don't know i thought that was such a great idea and what it was was people who were couldn't or were afraid to leave their homes during the the, the height of the quarantine um 
they were adopted by somebody who would one on one create a relationship, go pick up a fish fry, go grocery shopping, whatever it was, their medication, whatever it was they needed. And and again, they paired their seniors up so quickly that they went out of business, which is awesome. Does the county, is the county aware of that adopt a senior resource? I don't know, and it's, it went away because they, they, they got everyone paired up and they didn't feel there was a, a sustain, a need that was continuing. So, I don't know, but the county was aware, but they, the Facebook page isn't there anymore. Hmm. I did, uh, Gina, if you, um, maybe we can connect later too, if we want to keep this in our back pocket. I did have a family reach out to me today that has um, done a project as a family where they're taking old cans and making like little fake flower bouquets for elderly and just trying to do something nice for them. So, but they're out of material. So they're trying to get things. So I'm working with them to set up something to have a drop off spot here at the high school. People have canned goods that they empty the can out, clean the can out and donate it. They'll, they'll continue to make them. So I make contact with them right now. They're at gathering materials and then they'll get to the distribution part, hopefully in another month or so. And I said, I said, both roles, high school hat, I can help you with this. But when you get there, we might be able to connect these gifts with people. Oh, that's cool. Something keeping our pocket. Nice. Yeah, so it's cool too. Um, Gina, you kind of brought up the division the that themed in, in this, because I agree with you, there was a lot of that. And um, I don't I don't know how, how to tackle that, but I, I, I don't want to speak for the survey, but even since the surveys come out the last two weeks, many of the responses may be irrelevant to a certain extent. Like, I don't know how to tackle the division. Um, I, I, my guess would be that the division, and Sue, I'm not sure if you were on at that point, we we're talking about things that stood out in the survey. And um, the thing that just kept hitting me was the division between open us now or make you know make sure make that we're safe. safe and and keep this going until we know we're safe and so it seemed like there were sort of three lanes the open us now we'll we'll all take care of ourselves the middle lane was yeah we have to do this how do we do it safely and how do we communicate and know that people are being safe and then the other ones were let's just stay at home until we know um and i, I just I don't know. I don't know how we create bridges between those those three groups of people because you, you even see it. Yes, we're open now, but I have business owner friends who are taking it slow and getting grief from people that why aren't you open? And and um, you know, so I I I think the division is is still very clear and and Broad and I, I and then you see the people wearing masks who are kind of getting the looks from those that aren't and I know I don't know anyone have any ideas on how to well that's not going to get any better I don't think in the next four months so you know it's one of those things where this task force is going to be caught up in the politic the politics of the times and this community is is especially divisive because it's a very conservative community with with now a lot of non-conservative people <laughs> dwelling in the middle of it. So, um, you know, one of the things I think, um, I learned this working in the church, we need to pick a lane and stay in it, try to make it a middle of the road lane so that we're flexible um, to a certain extent, but we can't be jerked around by one side or the other and keep moving back and forth. We need to pick, pick, some middle of the road stance and position. We need to be open to listening to people's stories. Um, we need to make people, I think, feel heard and listened to. I think that's what's missing in this community, especially politically, is is you know, people just seem to not be getting listened to and heard, but also not be moved back and forth by everything that comes along. You know what I'm saying? We define ahead of time our middle of the road stance, and then we kind of stand on that. Um, you know, I've seen this, Be Becky knows this, I've seen this in church, in church leadership. Um, a pastor is paid by the people so he can be jerked around by this person's opinion or this person's opinion or this person's opinion. And next thing you know, you just have chaos. So if he takes a stand and kind of middle of the road and he's somewhat flexible and informed and listens to people, but stands firm, 
somewhere in the middle of the road, you're probably going to have a better journey <laughs> than if you try to please both sides. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I agree. Um, one question I had was, Bob, are there any places in town that are requiring masks or are requiring? Well, I, I can tell you, the, I can tell you the clinics are. Yes. Um, uh, Goodwill is requiring masks. They did a great job of, um, and Everts is not requiring masks. And I know they're not in the city, but um, some of our local businesses are doing really, really good jobs with asking people to wear masks. It's required at Goodwill, um, and they also limit the number of people in and out. And there, there's a visible employee that is sanitizing the carts and counting the people in and out of the store. And you have to wear a mask in order to enter. Um, Ebert's had really clear arrows on all of their lanes for shopping, um, as some of the grocery stores do, but they're not that obvious. So that um, for directional shopping. Um, it was interesting. One of the um, one of the people, and I don't think we could do it, so never mind. One of the suggestions was that you walk directional traffic in town with tra with the car traffic. I don't think that would work. No, I don't. Think so. <laughs> is that is that the role of this task group, though? Is that is that? I mean, what stores are doing is that. Is that our responsibility or is that? No, oh, no. okay. We bring it up because I wonder, because the, the question was around like the, the visionness and the safeness of that. And, and do people need a centralized resource to know what stores are requiring and not requiring? So if right. I'm scared to go out and I only want to go to a place that requires mass or has limited capacity, how do I find that out before I get to the front door? Got it. Right? I didn't know Walgreens had less than 57 people requirement until I got there. I saw it on the sign door. And I'm like, oh, okay, because it was kind of a free for all when I was there. So is that, you know, um, something we can offer, but not make it look like we're necessarily supporting that business. You know what I mean? Like, like we're offering it as information, but not saying that we're promoting all masks or we're not promoting stores that are you, you know what I mean? Can we can we provide the resource without looking like we're promoting a one side or the other? And and I, I like the this this conversation is great. And I was thinking, oh, so we have a you know all the rules and regulations for the stores. But that changes so often it, that I wonder if we could on our our website say to make sure you Check the website of the store you're going to to find out their requirements in real time. And then I, for instance, I'm part of a group sewing masks. So right there, we could say, if the place you're going requires a mask and you don't have one, have a contact for me and I and then I can I can, you know, get these people one. So if we have a, a really, really like the 30,000 foot view. Of we cannot manage what every store's requirement is. We can say you check, and if there's something we can help you with, we will do our best. Like the masks or whatever. Not no one's requiring gloves. In fact, gloves are discouraged. Correct. Are they um, keeping? Are they keeping their websites up to date? Like Walgreens and Pick and Save, and those are they doing that? I have noticed that I haven't gone to those particular ones, but I have been noticing that uh, most of the websites will at least deal with hours and, um, and, you know, masks encouraged. So maybe we want to, and I, I don't mean to get ahead on the agenda, but maybe one thing that's simple that we get on there is where can you get a mask? Like, I think sometimes people are like, that's a simple thing that we can at least put on the agenda or on the website that says, you know, here's a link, or if you're interested, contact this group is making them if you know people that need them for free or um, whatever it might be. That's a good idea. That that could be one of the resources we're offering. Yep. I would agree with that. Can we update the website to say as much, Bob? Buffy? We can. I just need the link of where we're directing them to. Okay, uh, there's there's two that come to mind. One is the Facebook page for um, 
or, or me because <laughs> i i'm the i'm there's two groups sewing and and um or two major groups sewing so if you're very proud of my ladies they've we are over five thousand we're almost at six thousand masks wow I, I just get to be the ringleader so i'm the lucky one you you email me those facebook page urls and i can get it over to have it placed on the website okay and then would mine be how would i how would i mean i don't know do i want my email out there i would not encourage that yeah <laughs> how about how, about how much your cell phone gina yeah <laughs> yeah no don't do that gina <laughs> Why don't you put the people at Oconomowoc one and say, if you're in need of masks, please email this address. And I check it every morning and then I'll get in touch with you, Gina, and say like, you know, this. this. Oh, okay. Are we okay. going to have something at the um, farmer's market? Would that be a good place to distribute them? Oh, yeah. I wonder if you're good. I wonder if you'll get any flack, though, from the anti-mask people. I mean, not that I can't. Just saying, um, are we again? Are we taking a position as a group? Um, because that's fine if we do, but then we we need to realize if if we're going to take a position that we're promoting masks, we're we could. I don't think we're taking the permission the position of promoting them. We are taking the position that if you want one and it makes you feel safe, we'll get you one. Got it. So if you at the farmer's market and you're providing them, um, that's cool. But you're saying that we're, we're going to provide them if you want them. If you want them. Yeah. We're not making anyone wear one. But if you don't, because again, I'm sorry to bring it back, but I drove Meals on Wheels today and two of my ladies said, where did you get your mask? So I'm going right. to right. give right. them masks because they just didn't even know where to ask. So yeah. I, I yeah. noticed that a lot of people are wearing homemade masks. So clearly there are they're getting them somehow somewhere right so, yeah then that's a that's a good idea i can just deliver a box to the check-in spot at the market and just say if you'd like one take one take one good idea so that's one of our idea. resources is we're going to provide masks that's cool i like that hey, we accomplished something <laughs> <laughs> So it's another, if, if we want to, can we add something else by saying um, under resources that we're going to make certain organizations aware that we exist and that we're available for certain needs like the ADRC? Is that, um, or I noticed, I think in the, in the, one of the survey results was from the organization Eros, which I think used to be Interfaith, I think, and they're, they're reaching people. Um, they're making phone calls at home, so would they be another uh, person? I think they they offered some services through that survey. They were available to off to contribute. I thought, um, yeah. and I'm wondering if they would be another resource to, to to tell them that if they had needs that let us know that, that in the ADRC. So under resources, we have in addition to masks, we have inform area organizations of our existence and willingness to help or something like that. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any magic ideas about trying to unify a group that's so divided in one part of life, I, it, it would be, uh, it would be great. I, I, my, my experience with that is a book called Healing, Healing the Heart of Democracy by Dr. Palmer. And he talks about inviting people to share their experiences and listening to each other's stories. Um, and I have found that the most helpful in, in trying to find common ground and trying to understand where the other person's coming from. I don't think we're ever going to bridge that gap right now, Gina. I think there's too much promoting division that we can't fight. Um, but as a group, you know, if we can take some middle ground and listen to listen, people won't matter. They want to be heard. Um, and I guess I see us um, in a position to 
promote respect, tolerance, and kindness. And my problem is so often, um, like the the it, that some of those things where you have to get to know people and hear their story, people who are they have very different points of view, and then they bring them together. We can't come together. And that to me is the right, hardest thing because right. we're all in our own little silos hearing the, our echo chambers of hearing whatever message we're, you know, we have, we tend to partner with others who have, who share that same philosophy. So, um, yeah, we about, be able to get together. That's so hard. What about like a community book club, like through the library? So, I mean, we don't have to talk about covid or whatever but just talking about some neutral thing like a book that you know and we get together on our zoom meetings say, I in a how do we talk about the book zoom. right but what do what, what yeah whatever but i mean you know you could pull people together about something you know well and that's a really good thought i think about five years ago cities were Entire mm -hmm. communities were adopting a book, and you would just go to your local coffee shop, and you'd have your book, and everybody was that wanted to participate was reading the same book. They would see you, and whether they knew you or not, would start talking to you. <laughs> Clearly, if people are out at a coffee shop, they would be sharing the same philosophy of they're okay being out, and they may want to do that. But I, I the Zoom that could be fun too. The chamber has a book club or did have a book book club. I think it's still going. Um, the chamber of commerce has one already. Um, what about like, okay, so like, what if we look at common needs that everybody has? Um, everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs shelter. Um, you know, like, what if we find the common areas? between the two groups and provide like, okay, so the farmer's market, both groups are going to farmer's market because they like to to get fresh food. They like to eat. I mean, can we focus on the areas of common need and work from there? You know, like, um, I don't know, safety. We all want our kids to be safe. I don't know. Um, I, I'm just, there are things that we all have in common, even though we're on different sides of the fence. Can that be where we promote our resources? For example, we all want to feel safe. Some people feel safe without a mask and some people don't. So we're providing masks. Um, some people don't have access to groceries. And we're going to match them up with resources to do that. Correct? I mean, we will make sure people get food. Um, one of the things that I know I heard from family promise is they can't be in the churches right now with their families. So they are looking for financial resource because there's going to be a lot of people out of their homes here soon. There's going to be people needing shelter. Um, they're looking for apartments or single dwellings where they can put families. Um, so food, shelter. Um, things like that. Can we stay focused on that? Because that is going to be where you're going to have both sides, right? Gina, I mean, you're going to have those needs for people who are. Who are on either side of the fence, correct? Right and and, you know, to your point, the food pantry has been has. Had record breaking fundraising without so much as asking for a penny since this started um, at funds and food. In fact, they're trying to find people to come in because they have so much food, they can't get rid of it fast enough. So, um, does anybody, yeah. Does, does anybody deliver food to places like, um, like you're doing Meals on Wheels? Are there um, people who maybe have children who are immunosuppressed or something and they're not going out. Is there anybody delivering food besides pick and I mean, okay, so pick and save is, but you pay for that. Is there anyone like the food pantry delivering food to people who maybe aren't employed right now and can't buy it? Uh, not to my knowledge, everything has a fee. Jason, I know the school district is having people pick up and they have accommodated for 
say the single working parent by having a Sunday after Sunday Sorry. afternoon or evening um, pickup, which I thought that was great. That is great. Um, and I Does know lose organization do food shopping and delivery. I think there's a charge. Okay. And I know there's Instacart and there, you know, um, but that every, you pay for all of that. Yeah, so. Instacart is expensive. Is it? I mean, yeah. it, it's, I mean, it's, that's what I'm using and yes, I'm paying for, I'm paying for it, but I can afford it. So, um, but I'm thinking of people who are unemployed. I think, aren't we going to see more of that here in the next month or so? We're going to see more people unemployed and more people out of food and out of maybe their living space because now they can be evicted correct yep. correct and and i think that that's really something to keep our ear to the ground on um if we're seeing that a food a free of charge food delivery um is something that would maybe keep someone safe or whatever you know and maybe that's the thing that would bubble up through adrc um because i feel like there are people who would sign on to do that um, if, if, if it's in a need, yeah, right. So I, I, I think if that need becomes evident that that we could put together an organization to to do free deliveries. Um, to to that point, though, if I the I thought the survey was going to remain open, even though we had a deadline. Uh, Bob, is the survey still open? It is not still open. We ended it um, last. What is today? the 28th i believe we we left it open through last saturday so. okay is there a harm in just having it open well we needed to gather data and obviously that was part of the challenge was or when did we meet last it would have closed on thursday if we met last thursday and part of the concern is as i'm sharing data I'd be updating your 72 page report every time a new one comes in. Right. <laughs> what about like adopt the adopt a senior site? Can we do something similar with adopt adopt a need or adopt a family? I mean, can we can we run something like that where the need comes in? What, um, what about if we gathered the volunteer base first? And because we know we'll, we'll have to work to find the need, just like communicating with seniors, but we'll have to work to find the need. But if we start to say on again on the website, like, hey, email, like, click here for an email to say if you're interested in if we want to focus on food shopping for free and getting it for people, if you're interested in doing that, and if we get a list of seven or eight people that are willing to do it, and we and I respond and say, hey, we're at the beginning parts of this. I've got your information, maybe in touch, even from a school lens, I'm kind of paralyzed till July 1st, maybe longer, but I could easily see setting up through our students for service, our upperclassmen each taking one and going out and food shopping and delivering and, and building that network there. And then working with our partners to identify how we can, you know, identify who needs to be. I'm a little concerned that that we're, we don't have the need, that the need isn't there. Um, I, I only because, um, well, and, and now this has been right in the beginning of things. You guys may know Kim hero. She contacted me and asked me if I knew any seniors that needed anything needed grocery shopping, whatever. I couldn't find one. I couldn't. And, and that was then after that, I heard about adopt a senior, but I made calls to. Um, Shorehaven to the Berkshires to the scene to Ginny Hicks at the senior center. Uh, anyone I could think of that had access to a lot of seniors and and everyone was being cared for by neighbors or family, which was great. And and I, I love that. I mean, I just don't want to get a bunch of people to say, hey, will you help and then never put them to work? <laughs> so that's why that's what I was saying. If the survey is still there and we find out that there is a need, then then we could. But I just I I didn't. I didn't feel that as a need. And again, before when I went looking for that, I didn't find it. Well, if but time has looking, time well, has looking for a way to communicate needs then and when people have them. What if instead of the survey, we replace the survey with something that's more ongoing? Yeah. Where the yeah. survey was, people can find a new question 
um, sheet and fill it out, and we're monitoring that. I think that's ultimately what I was getting at too, was if we can create a form on the website that says, I, I mean, we don't need any more email on political beliefs and what they need, but this is Oconomowoc <laughs> response people and we stand ready to help and serve. If you are in need of something or you know someone in need of something, you know, like please fill out this form and, and we'll monitor it. Doesn't mean we're gonna get somebody a new house or stop them from getting evicted, but we can at least point them in the right direction. Right, and like, for example, Family Promise said for a while, if, if someone's gonna be evicted, let them know they may be able to help. They, they may be able to give them money to stay where they are, you know. So matching, we match those people up with these organizations that we got information through the survey, we can use that information to match people up. But we need to have a form of communication for them to communicate their need to us. Yeah. And then if we're staying focused on food, shelter, utilities, socialization, we're staying out of the political realm, correct? I mean, we're just providing basic needs that everybody's going to have no matter what their political views are. So we're staying out of that realm, Gina, right? I mean, does that help? Could, could Bob, could the form, like, and maybe this is a better question for the IT folks, almost have a drop down where you show your name, your contact information, and then we put down on there the same concerns we had in the survey, loss of income, needing food delivery, socialization support unemployment needs fear of eviction whatever it might be and we list maybe five or seven things that and then other and then people like populate and write their information and... i i kind of like just having an open just a blank they don't even have to pick just you they say here's my name address contact information this is what i need and, and... i'm just afraid we're going to get the i can't believe you're handing out masks and everything else like that's all i mean yeah. oh no <laughs> This yeah. is not an this right. is not an opinion gathering place. This is a an I need help grocery shopping. Can you connect me with somebody? Um, or you know, to the I we need I need utility assistance because Family Promise just um, Sue. I'm sure you may have seen the email they just sent it out saying tell your community we we have the funds so um, send them to us. So. Um, yeah, I, I think that some place to have as needs change to, to sort of keep our, our finger on the pulse of, of what people are needing, because we're very lucky out here. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're very insulated and so many people, we just don't, we don't see it. So I worry that some of those people do fall between the cracks because we all sort of are complacent and there's no place for them to come and maybe what we do is we connect to the nonprofits as well, the free clinic, the food pantry, and say, you know, tell them, well, they should all know about the task force because that's one of our our uh, our teams. But they, so. they don't know what we do yet. So we'd need to communicate what kinds of things we're looking for from them. You know, they, you know, because you have people come into those organizations and they say, um, you know, we're, we can offer services and you say, well, tell me what I need, you know, I need a list of exactly what, because when I have that need, then I'll know where to go. You, you, we have to be specific when we offer resources. And, you know, my concern is because through family promise and through nursing in this community as an outreach nurse for many years, the, the, yes, we are lucky, but there are a lot of people in this community that aren't and you don't right. see them. You don't Ooh. see them. Yeah. They're the people who are living at home with dementia. They're the people who are um, living living at home and don't want to go into a nursing home and are living in pigsties, but won't let you take them out of there. Um, th we are full of that in this community, right, Bob? <laughs> I see you shaking your head. Yeah. So, yeah. But but we don't. You know, they have a right to be where they are doing what they're doing and they don't ask for help because they don't want you coming in and hauling them out of there. So, and we found that with family promise. Remember, Gina, everybody said we don't have homeless people here, but the school, we use the school stats and we had a ton of homeless people, children then. So 19. 19. Yeah. Well, so, one year. well, I think it, it even went up higher than that, didn't it? While we were doing that, it kept going up. But anyways, just to make the point that, yes, the majority of people are lucky, but hidden in, in amongst them, 
are a lot of needs and the ADRC is aware of, of most of those needs because they're the ones that are in there meeting them. Um, so, you know, just it, the, 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 the problem is there's always been big cracks because this is a, a pretty wealthy community. And if you're not wealthy, um, it's hard. It, it's hard for you to come out and ask for help in this community. And um, I think the, the school. Oh, sorry, Sue. That's all right. Go ahead. Um, this, Jason, are the school social workers aware of the task force and the team and that we want to be a resource? Because I get such a good feel for the idea that the teachers, the social workers and health room staff really know who the at risk kids are. Do they know that we're here? Um, I can't speak for all of them. I think, um, I think going back to the point made earlier, I don't know if they know why to come to us. Yes. So we need to define that, right? I mean, we need to define that. Yeah. What what are we going to provide? And we've already kind of narrowed it down. We're going to be in the area of possible housing, food. Um, we're going to stay away from medical, right? Because that they yeah. yeah we yeah, talked we about food, shelter, safety, and utility. Well, and I think we yeah. can legitimately bring medical in because the Lake Area Free Clinic is an absolute rock star. Um, they do such good work, and I think if all if our role is to connect right. in that place, um, so they do medical and dental. Um, so I, if we just say that we want to, at, at our core, is making sure that everyone has basic needs met, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and do we want to add anything about? Um, I don't want to go into the business of behavioral health, but if someone's struggling and they reached out, we can direct them to one of our partners in, say, Rogers. Um, so, in essence, we would sort of be, I don't want to recreate the wheel because 211 is excellent, but in essence, we would sort of be a little local 211 hub. We, we can connect your need with a resource, whatever your need is, as, as if it deals with those, those basic needs. And then I, I think above and beyond the basic needs, I would say if our group can work on, on, on unity on just creating community uh, and, and so we can just sort of rise above some of those, those, those divisions that we've been feeling recently and create the unity of, of this, you know, something positive, something where we're, we are in community. Because we're still small enough, I think, to feel that sense of I live here, I belong to a really great community because of our little downtown, I think, even though our town is way more than our downtown. I think that's sort of old fashioned enough to hold us together as a, um, you know, a nice community. You know, you're in the crossfire, Gina, and this must be, I, I'm going to validate for you how difficult it is. Been there, done that, um, living, in, living in the crossfire, right, Becky? Um, it, <laughs> um, and so please know that we, we got your back and we do plan to role model unity and, and we're here to help you provide that. And, um, you know, we can talk off, off on a separate conversation because I learned the hard way a lot of things that I could just encourage you with, you know, you're never going to fix everything. Just be faithful. Just do what you can. And, um, you know, so I, I like where we're going. I like that we're talking about basic resources. I'm thinking that um, making 211 aware. Um, that we're a resource along with the ADRC and the social workers at the high school and family prom, you know, like letting those organizations know that that we're here and that we're we want to help with the basics and role model that we're not going to get caught up in the divisiveness or the politics and we're going to stand together and, you know, just do the best we can to be faithful because you're not, this is only going to get worse, Gina. I'm sorry. This is between now and November. 
you know, that this is going to be divisive and people are scared. And when people are scared, you know, they get worse. So, um, but I like that we could role model unity and small community. Taking care of each other. Taking care of each other and supporting each other um, and staying out of things that are controversial, especially if we're on the task group. Um, trying to stay out I'm of I'm sorry. Here. Go ahead, Becky. Hey, what if somebody, you know, puts on their knee that they're lonely and they, they I mean, I deal with a lot of seniors in my business and, you know, widows and widowers and they're lonesome and, you know, they're not seeing people and they're not getting hugs. Is there a way, and we talked about bridging you know, the need to, to a volunteer, you know, somehow using, you know, maybe the service clubs, Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions or whatever to kind of, you know, do weekly phone calls with people or our own little adopt a senior or, a, you know, connection and put some of those people that, you know, they're not a service agency per se, but that, you know, you get a ton of people in Rotary and whatever that would be happy to, you know, feel like they're doing something. Right. right. You know, there's yeah. also, Jason, there's a program we used with um, seniors where um, the seniors went and interviewed, I'm sorry, the, the, your senior students are your students. They went and each one interviewed a senior and wrote a play about their life and then did a community play um on this person's life so that this i mean that was really a, a fun thing it was very involved but um it got this the students connected with seniors in the community and it got the seniors to hear and understand their stories in ways that they were just really kind of blown away by the things these people had done and the lives they'd lived and what they'd lived through so um you know, maybe we could do something like that with your your school volunteers matching them. I do know that your Eros is matching um, lonely seniors with with regular phone calls. Okay. Um, so, you know, we would have to um, maybe I don't know work with them or do something different from them if we don't want to duplicate services. Um, they did I. I think I read that on the survey that they were doing that, or I saw okay. it somewhere, but um, I know that matching school students up with seniors has also been good for both groups. Um, if that's something that um, Jason, you're interested in, we could talk about it more. Yep. Yeah, I probably won't have access till September, but like, as this goes on and those things, and that's absolutely, we do um, technology seminars with seniors. Oh, that would be cool, yeah. We sit down with them and show them how to use an iPad and how to FaceTime and those types. <laughs> so it's good. It, it may not be safe this this fall, though, to, to send a student in, sitting next to a senior. No, but, yeah. but a phone call or, you know, might um, do a lot there. And, um, yes. you know, there's simple things that we can figure out and go from there. So I think what I'm hearing is two big additions to the website are where to get masks and or interested in masks and uh, how to do that. And then the form to identify a need of support to get connected to something you need. And um, yeah, I think that's great. It's awesome. The other piece is, go ahead, sorry. sorry. When, the, when the need comes in, then what happens to it? Goes to Bob first? Bob, you, um, it on you can website. route it to me, Bob, and then I'll get in touch with us and yeah. you so, can send it to the email and I'll go from there. I'll give you guys a call and be like, oh, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> <Sorry about it. laughs> well, Jason I, I has a coded email address called people at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I have realized over the years of, of working on kind of, I, I love being the, it's amazing how many times there's a need and a resource in the same community, but they just don't know about each other. Right. And, and so I, I've been doing that for years and, and it's, it, I always get to feel good. It's kind of like me in the masks. I'm the gatekeeper. 
but really it's just connecting two things. Mm -hmm. The need is there and the fix is there, but they just don't know. So if we, right. we can sort of serve as that, that bridge, if, or if we identify a new need, maybe we need to figure out a way to create a new resource, not us as these individuals, but, but, you know, I, I think that's the hardest thing is not knowing sometimes what the needs are, but also, um, again, just being lucky enough to know what the need is and know who's fixing the need and say, Hey, have you met, you know, and then there you go, then they go. And, and building off rather than the social workers, knowing if we exist, us knowing the social workers exist. So when a family reaches out and says, we recently become homeless, and my seven-year-old at Summit and me are there, we get in touch with that social worker and say this information was given to us and then they can begin their bid. So um, that idea of connecting is good. Um, yeah, not to end the conversation, but to maybe push it along. Um, you received that proposal, because um, this is kind of more of the socialization piece too. Um, Bob, do you want to talk a little bit about Paula's proposal and sure and again obviously we're receiving things through the website so people are aware of some of it's there um and again one of the things we've we've heard from the business side um and it's kind of the socialization and we saw it in the survey right when are we going to be able to get back together you know all these events are canceling to protect the people um but there's still an interest in people and I can't say the word gather, right? To come downtown, <laughs> and then how do we do that? Uh, I know on the business side, we had a lot of conversations about people would would come out and come downtown if they felt safe, felt safe in going to, into a business, or if not going into a business in another place. Um, this proposal originally came to us about closing off a parking lot, which is a political hot potato here in this community. Uh, so I had to redirect it a little bit to a piece of grass we have that we worked very hard <laughs> to get. Um, Good money again, for that. And, and, and again, it's it's trying to harness people who do have an interest um, in doing some things. Um, I know uh, I, if I drive out of here today, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we have some seating out on the Village Green. Um, often I need others to motivate that little thing to happen um because i'm a little bit too close to it um but this seemed to at least to have some at least legs and motivation uh, it appears that they uh or and i've encouraged them to work with organizations like the downtown business group or and or the chamber um so again wanted to share it with all of you because i think it is something that as we get more into the warmer weather, people are going to seek that out. People are going to want that opportunity um, and, and thought this would be a good venue. I did share it with the business group as well, only via email. Um, you know, we, we've been primarily meeting via email on different things, um, but I know that there have been, based on the survey responses, it was something that fit in this pillar as well. So. It's interesting. You different. Oh, go ahead. It, it's a great idea. It's wonderful. I mean, it's awesome. But again, you're getting into who polices that to keep it safe and then who's going to flaunt it so that they get in your face so they make you police it and then make a big deal out of it. I mean, is it is it going to be um, you provide it and then whatever happens happens? Is, is well, that that's, that's a concern. I mean, yeah. that's a concern of the city of we don't have volunteers to sanitize a table when one family gets up and another wants to come. And that's always that balance um, on our end. Um, Do you have so, liability around that? Um, I believe the city has something called a uh, recreational immunity. I'll have to check with our attorney. But as long as we don't charge for it, um, and it's a pu in the public domain, um, I do I do not believe people can turn on the city at, per, for providing something. So, okay. okay. Can, can you give a little additional definition to what the this would look like? Tents, portable bathrooms, tables, and seating. Yeah, and again, I I, th I think for my 
standpoint, I would pick it up a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know if we want to be in the business of having portable bathrooms. Um, I no. do. The other thing, uh, and again, um, I have to be very careful internally of the city of saying, I don't like your idea. Um, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure I would advocate for having a, I think there was a recommendation of some sort of a, a service kiosk or a tent, how I would envision it. And, and, and I think the vetting that I've had with some of the people on the business side would be, you know, do we do what we can to provide seating opportunities? Uh, because there may be people who are yet comfortable going into and seating, sitting inside of a restaurant. But does it create an opportunity for a family to order carry out from Fiesta and being able to be notified and then they could actually have a place to dine downtown, not indoors? When um, when she first sent the proposal, I just did some researching around on that. I'm not, this is not at all, I don't think this is our job and I think it's gotta come from um, Dolo or the chamber or whoever, but a lot of streets are taking like, our cities are taking Saturday night and shutting down their main street and putting tables six feet apart so that people can, restaurants have full capacity and people have a safe place to eat if they're willing to go out there and, and do that and play traffic mode. Um, that's what this reminded me of. Or putting like the circles in the park saying, hey, right. if you want to be kept, like not regulated, but if you want zone, we're laying it out for you here. It's by no means required. Yeah. And the other thing that I did, so we do, and we didn't in the past, but several, we opened up outdoor dining guidelines in the city. We just want to know that they're there. Um, we distributed those guidelines to the restaurants, at least downtown, who weren't utilizing it already. So we have one, I think, on the on the agenda for next Tuesday. Coco's, who's saying, "Hey, <laughs> how do I do this? How do I get more capacity since they've responsibly separated tables, are only taking reservations, are only doing certain things?" Um, you know, some of the restaurants. I don't, you know, making sure that they're aware that this is out there for them to spill out under the street. So. It's a good idea to to provide outside eating space is keeping with social distancing. It's encouraging people to be able to come downtown and eat. Um, it's I mean, it, it's meeting uh, seems like all the safe criteria, although there will be people who will abuse it. Um, I mean, it I, I don't see it as a bad thing. It's just seems like the logistics around it. Um, are going to be where where you might have your issues, um, and is it is it going to be hands off? Just trust people to be adult, and if you don't feel comfortable, don't come. Um, you know that just so those parameters are kind of defined for you ahead of time, so that you don't end up in a mess you didn't predict. Um, but providing all kinds of outside seating for people to eat is a great idea. Um, because people are going to be safer eating outside than they are inside this summer. Right. Yep. I, I would just make sure I didn't have any liability around that or any, like, it's not going to be the city's responsibility to be cleaning these tables in between people and, and people are aware of that and they do it at their own risk. Then some kind of, <laughs> some kind of communication that. We're providing this, but you're at your own risk. You know, bring your own wipes, clean the table yourself, kind of thing. Again, that's the position we've made: is we'll make the space available. If there's an entity that wants to take this and run with it, and in that in that proposal, that's one of the comments: is well, we need to do fundraising to get more tables. You know that that's why a partner organization probably needs to be involved, as opposed to the city just doing it. So what happens when a partner gets involved then does it become their responsibility? Do they have liability around it? I mean that's an interesting question. I'll have to ask our attorney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well and, and I, I feel like the city certainly can provide more seating in the village green, but we do end up with the issue of restrooms. 
Um, and I, I believe when the library is open, that's considered a public restroom. Um, I think there was one more that was mentioned, Bob, in a recent. The mug and muffin bathroom, the one in mug and muffin. There's a bathroom in there that a lot of people use when they're yeah, the the swirl. Yep. Okay. Because that that I do, I do not envision um, porta potties down there. I just think that's not a good good idea. Um, did the this is going way back, but did the um, the building that was originally proposed, uh, Bob Duffy? This question is for you. A building was proposed with restrooms, concessions, and sort of shared space in the village green area. Has that gone away, or is that just on in the future hold for a while? I think it's I, I think it shifted um, as the community became um, aware. I shouldn't even say aware as the community became or saw what could happen on the village green as an open space. So again, you have different camps, right? You have the camp that said, leave it, leave it as a totally open space because we can now view the lake and we can accommodate large events. Um, so there was some movement there of do we, how do we deal with it? And then I think the secondary piece was things changed, right? So we're currently, um, Building out a new police department, we're moving out a group out of city hall. Um, so I know that there's been talks and, and again, it's going to take time. But once they move, we'll do some analysis. Um, we had talked about does the pavilion move toward the playground where families already gather. Um, and then number 2, um, if there, if there's not utilities there, which there are not. Um, do we, as an organization, as a city, long range, look at using the backside of City Hall as a building where the garages are and turn that into a form of public restrooms on the backside of City Hall? That's a good idea. So they could always be accessed from the exterior of the building. That's a good idea. Yeah. Great idea. And you know, um, that a little town that, that we go to, they have um, the. <laughs> A lot of the stores, believe it or not, uh, it's Vermont, so believe that, that they the stores don't have public restrooms. The buildings are very, very old, and so a lot of the restrooms are un they are accessible only to employees. And so they actually have a welcome center that has public restrooms. It's staffed by volunteers. I could see this behind the, mm -hmm. the back side of the, of the um, city hall. Staffed by volunteers, and they'll people will come in and say, you know, where is this? What can I do here? So kind of how the chamber used to be when it was street level of hey, what, what is there to do here? I'm you know, I'm visiting. But it brought people in to use the restrooms, and then you had a friendly volunteer sitting there. And even if the volunteer wasn't there, it didn't matter. You could still use it's it. It's like a wayside. I mean, yeah, but it was quaint. Like the restrooms. And yeah. And the nice thing though about that building that we talked about on the village green was um bringing back skating to that part of the lake. And there it was like the uh warming hut, right? Skate rental and warming hut, which City Hall might be a little far away for that. Oh, but if you anyway, still had sorry, the, that was an aside. If you still had the ability to put some form of pavilion by the playground area by the boat right. launch, that's where one of the areas they clear for skating as well. So, and you could light it at that location. So, that was part of the kind of good idea. Yeah. So I think I'm hearing I, that this. Project proposal is a great idea, but sits better with a partner that we um, are there. I, I'm, I'm not interested in all that. I don't, I don't have time to haul tables in my spare time yet either. But you got the muscles. I have an unrelated question. Um, back to uh, Jason, we have a great connection with the school, the, the public school system and the district. Do we, in terms of social workers and resources and connections, do we need to reach out to any parochial schools in the community or are they sort of like their go-to would be their congregation or the church that they're affiliated with? Or do we go ahead and try to maybe through the nonprofit and school and church, any of the churches that have a school, just make sure they know that, that we're here? I think that's great. I think um, I'll jot that down. And Bob, when we meet with Pat next week, we can 
just make sure that the lens of school knows those resources and things like that. So, yep. I can right. say I dealt with one of the comments from the survey directly, which was um, doing a positive story about the joke of the day. And no, the lady at Knoll Ward who has the little blackboard out. I connected with uh, Rebecca Seymour today about something else, and I told her to that that might be a fun follow up. Um, the joke of the day, the scavenger hunt that's over on Oakwood, and then the family that at uh, Knoll Ward that does the little chalkboard. Um, so I told her to connect with those guys and and uh, thank them for their fun efforts and the Oconomowoc Rocks group because they've yeah. they've been really fun and positive throughout all this too. So I did I did do one thing directly from the survey. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> yeah. Gina, give yourself a little bit more credit. Yeah. <laughs> there. yeah. The um. Got to start somewhere, Gina. Yeah, Got to start somewhere. We meet next Thursday um, with the nonprofit group, right? Um, and so between now and then, I'll be in touch with Bob and everybody through email on getting the form put together and getting the mask information posted. And that's a, a good first steps for our well, first real you, meeting together. Could you add to that to define the resources that we are going to be like to put in writing somewhere? The resources that we're going to be focused on and also the um people that we're going to notify that these are the resources that we have mm -hmm. yep okay. and yep to to the, the the whole conversation i know that our task force has sort of a mission a mission statement should should we have one as a team nothing fancy but just more to sort of give us a little um you know, you put that lens on it that if we're doing something, does it fit in does our fit? mission? Like statement. when you said the word connect. Yeah. Well, yeah. You had talked about connecting areas of basic needs. Mm -hmm. with, with okay, so with an overarching, I'm going back to to um, me who needs everyone to be happy. Um, <laughs> to that, you, that, you'll get over that yeah. quick. <laughs> I will be 60 on Saturday and I still think it can happen. <laughs> oh no. Okay. I'll, but, I'll call you. <laughs> Sunday. Uh, and my hopes are dashed on the rocks. Um, yeah. No, but, but with that overarching uh, spirit of unity, we, we want to connect, we want to build bridges, um, but with that overarching or an umbrella or whatever, that we want to create unity and a sense of community and um, connectedness. There's that word again, connected. Connect. Can you use a symbol like a bridge that, a symbol, a visual that shows we connection? Task, our yeah. task force has a, a, a oh, logo. Okay. Yeah, okay. But I mean, for us, like, if you're saying we have our own mission statement um, is to connect um, to something that shows that's our purpose is to connect. Um, well, I didn't, it, it was more for me that we have a sense of purpose and we know what we are doing as a team. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I can yeah. report that our team has been busy in the music, arts and culture division as well. <laughs> Yes, you have been. Great. We, we couldn't we couldn't wait for everybody to get together because we wanted to move the needle a little bit. So we've been doing some fun uh, music series in the in the clock tower, and that's all thanks that's being channeled through this team. Um, and then th we've created the blackboard that we talked about last week at the meeting. Um, that was really well received. There's been a bit Where is of a it? Um, it was at the farmer's market okay. and then we picked it up and moved it physically to the window at Mays. Okay. But it's really important to me that it stays relevant. So, uh, and current. And so I brought it home and I'm reworking it to be of this weekend's activities. We've had a hiccup with the chamber and the, um, the farmer's market. They, I, I was going to make 2 blackboards, have them have 1 and have 1 stationary in the window of Mays garden center. Just so I wasn't having to move it, and they don't have the the manpower to um, 
to I would create their blackboard, but they they have a lot of signage, they said, so they don't want to have to move it from first bank to the parking lot and then back again. So um, so I don't know, we'll have to see, but I don't want to do it sometimes and not all the time. So we need consistency. Um, so I'll have to, I just had that call. So we'll have to figure that out. Is, is there an opportunity to, in, instead of the farmer's market to do it at like the, the lobby of the library or something like that? Where it stays? Yeah. Yeah, right. And that's great. And it, but then it would also, um, it could be there and then it, it will still be at maze. It'll be in the window there. So that's very visual as you're walking through town. Um, and then the other thing that we'll start hopefully this weekend is um, we're calling it uh, pop up and play. So we have musicians who can, uh, we have permission to have them just the spirit moves them. Um, they'll have to be, you know, we're the gatekeepers, so they'll they'll have signage that says they're legitimate, and they are just able to go downtown and start playing and play their instrument for 15, 20 minutes, whatever they want to do, and then just pack it up and and move along. So they're not they're not being paid, and they are not taking any money. They're not busking. They're just they're just there to provide some music, culture, some smiles and something positive. And that starts this weekend. Do you have the clock tower series played out past the next couple of weeks? So we have it through July 4th. OK, I'm wondering if we should just I know we had these dreams of a calendar, but again, back on our website, I'm almost going back and saying in need of support. Here's the form. Um, what's the other one? In need of feeling um, safe, need a mask, fill this, here you go, click here. And then another one says, and then have a little fun and clock tower tune. Don't forget clock tower tunes and, and list the month coming up and just so people, I don't know, see, see what's happening. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm all, we have a lot of calendars I've found by trying to create the blackboards that are like everything comes up there are no events scheduled for the chamber. There are no events scheduled for the city. And you know there are. I mean, there actually aren't a lot, but it's it's really, how do I say this? I don't want to create another place to collect information. Right. I want the city the to goal, have one clear place to go. Well, it depends I don't know if the goal is a place to collect information, but if somebody goes to our COVID website because they're feeling lonely, they see also this clock tower things going on. It's a, it's a, the foundational landing spot. I don't think um, we're going to start collecting chamber stuff or anything else like that. Okay. Just gonna... So, so what are what their task for the what the Oconomowoc responds is involved with would be there. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I just I'm worried because I'm finding that it's really hard to collect information. There's the chamber. There's a thing called like life in Oconomowoc. There's the city. There's visit Oconomowoc. There's it's a lot of it's very confusing. It's very confusing. Yeah. So <laughs> comes down to funding. Yeah. No, and I'm not being critical. I, I mean, there, it's just I kept getting like I I just I got I would find something and then I couldn't find it again. And it's a, it's a sign of our times. You have websites. You have uh, Facebook pages. You have Instagram. Ah. So um, yeah, it's 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 hard to keep up. I like the idea of any of our actions being listed, like the tunes and the pop. We're calling the pop up musicians pop up and play. Good. That's awesome. Three so far. Okay. All right. Um, awesome. And we, and we were including your clock tower tunes on our uh, events calendar on Visit Oconomowoc. I know the last cut few. The next couple are on there. So good. Nice. All right. Well, good. Um, all right. We'll see each other next Thursday then. Give me a call or shoot me an email if you get any other ideas or things popping up. And I shot a, a, a Teams meeting for you and I and Pat, Jason, on eight o'clock Monday morning. Monday morning. So perfect. So it's the best way to start the week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we have a conversation after this? A quick call. Do you have time for a quick call? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Becky, yeah. have a great trip. Thank you. Have fun, Becky. Thank you. See you soon.
Thank you. Bye.